the Radeon RX 6700. Now this is an interesting piece of kit. I recently put together a video on this GPU for the main Digital Foundry channel, specifically because so many of its hardware specifications are a match for the GPU in Sony's PlayStation 5, and it was fun to bench them side by side to see how close it came to matching console performance. And additionally, I was also intrigued to see how mainstream RTX offerings compared. We've used 2070 Super for some time now, but we're considering a move to RTX 3060 and its successor, essentially products users are more likely to own in 2024. So alongside the RX 6700, and of course the PlayStation 5, we took a look at this trio of RTX offerings, kicking off with a Plague Tale Requiem. Looking at the performance measurements here, the 6700 is basically on par with the PS5, and so in PC terms, it's ahead of the pack. The 2070 Super is next closest with 97% of the PS5's throughput, followed by the 4060 with 94%. 3060 is way off pace with just 83% of the PS5's output. Still in the fight though, but you'd be swapping out a Sobo's 1440p to 4K TAA upscaler in favor of something like DLSS balanced or performance mode. And here in Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, the 6700 is fastest, but the 4060 inches marginally ahead of PS5 by just 3% closely followed by 2070 Super with a two-point lead. Very close stuff then. It's actually a really tight grouping here. RTX 3060 has typically lagged, but you've got 92% of PS5 throughput here. If that feels lower than expected, bearing in mind the RT focus, it's worth remembering that Ubisoft Massive's RT implementation on consoles is custom. You're not quite comparing like with like here. And revisiting Alan Wake 2's quality mode, again a really close grouping of GPUs here against the console, but intriguing to note that only the RTX 4060 actually beats the PlayStation 5 here with a 6.3 percentage point lead. Perhaps inevitably 3060 is slowest, though it does still have 92% of the PS5's throughput on this one. However, things shift when we move to the performance mode targeting 60 frames per second. Here, the only car slower is the RTX 3060, which still manages to deliver 96% of the PS5's throughput. The RX 6700, it can be argued, is in a class beyond uh, the 60 level NVIDIA offerings, and it does deliver the highest performance with a circa 11 point lead over PS5. 4060 is next, about 7% ahead of the console. Okay, so Cyberpunk 2077, it's kind of nuts in RT mode, right? We saw awful 6700 performance against PS5, but check out the results with the Nvidia cards added. PS5 beats 3060 by 17%, dropping to 9% against uh, 2070 Super. Um, it requires 4060 and third generation RT cores to get ahead of PS5 here, but the lead is still only around 3.7%. I mean, we've seen outlier results before, but this one is difficult to explain. Uh, we're pretty confident in how close the match settings are, and in the wake of this test, we put some time into checking that the actual RT effect on the console is the same as it is on PC. Now, the game only deploys local RT shadows in its 30 FPS mode on consoles, but we did some more match comparison in other content. There's no real evidence that the precision of the ray tracing is any different. So yeah, all very intriguing. I did show the 6700 effectively matching PS5 in match settings in its performance mode, however. Uh, but this isn't especially an AMD thing. Rerunning the three-way head-to-head, but this time with RTX 4060 alongside the 6700, it effectively operates on par with the 6700. With DRS dynamic resolution scaling active, it maintains 60 FPS where the PlayStation 5 does not. Still thinking DRS isn't quite working as it should on PlayStation 5 though, as when you stop running about at speed, performance stabilizes. So again, showing the stats with DRS off, you get similar variances in performance on our PC parts. Curious to see the 4060 keeping pace with both PS5 and 6700 there. Okay, so let's try to wrap up this testing with some takeaways. I think our choice of RTX 2070 Super in our PC reviews has been a pretty strong one over the years in terms of saying that this specific class of card can deliver console-like performance. 
but it is the year 2024 now. And with the exception of a Plague Tale Requiem, the RTX 4060 has proven to be faster than the console. So today's $300 GPU is beating 2019's $500 Nvidia offering and putting up a good fight against the PS5. The only catch being its eight gigs of frame buffer memory when the RTX 3060 is offering 50% more. 3060 is often a fair bit slower, but it doesn't struggle with The Last of Us Part 1's obscene memory requirements on high settings, whereas even the 10 gig 6700 and the 8 gig 4060 definitely do. Even so, I do think replacing the venerable 2070 Super with both 3060 and 4060 will give a good spread in mainstream PC game testing. As for the RX 6700 here, not sure you can buy it new now. It seemed to be a pretty limited release when it did launch, but it can clearly do the job for 1080p gaming, just as any of the cards tested in this video can. But it's curious to see how this class of hardware is servicing 4K living room TVs in the PS5, but is better suited to 1080p and 1440p screens on PC. That said, with Avatar and Alan Wake's performance modes, those are also outputting a reconstructed 1440p on the PS5 for much lower resolutions. And I guess that's the price we need to pay for what is essentially mainstream class GPU performance you can get for circa $300. In terms of broadly equivalent PC parts, all of which means we've come to the end of this video. So yeah, the usual outro stuff applies. Like, subscribe, share if you enjoyed the content consider bell ringing for whatever notifications may or may not come your way. And please do think about joining us on the DF Supporter Program. I mean, you know the score by now. High quality video downloads, early access to DF Direct Weekly, bonus material, access to our amazing community. It's all good stuff. And as always, store.digitalfoundry.net. It's a wondrous portal to our various merchandising wares. That's all from me on this one. Thanks for watching and supporting Digital Foundry.